absolutely beautiful. Not much going on, <laughs> but there's all kinds of trails in this area. Um, in fact, really good behind me. As you can see, there's the main road is right there. That is the 138. No, no, that's not the 138. That is the. Uh, I forgot. No, this is worth. Well, anyway, I'll find out later. But there's lots and lots of trails around here. Very easy trails. They're not real difficult. That's why they're called easy. Uh, it's a beautiful area out here. Right now, there's a little bit of snow in the mountains. It's probably about 65 degrees out here, maybe. Just to be if the cloud gets in front of the sun or not. But uh, just a Swarthout Canyon was named for a group of Mormon settlers who arrived in this area in the late 1840s, George Washington Swarthout and his brothers Nathan and Truman. Swarthout Canyon Road branches off from Lone Pine Canyon Road about two miles from Highway 138. The wagon company they traveled with divided near Laramie, Wyoming. The battalion under Captain Hunt's command headed for California. Ira Eldridge's group was one of those that continued on to Salt Lake and then subsequently headed for California. The Mormon road stretched from Salt Lake across the Mojave Desert and down through Cajon Pass. In that group was George W. Swarthout. According to Wrightwood History and the History of the San Gabriel, written by John Robinson, the Mormon colony purchased the San Bernardino Rancho from the Lugos in 1851. Two of these Mormons, Nathan and Truman Swarthout, homesteaded in Lone Pine Canyon and expanded their land holdings to include the valley that now bears their name, where he ran scattered amounts of cattle from the Swarthout Valley, now known as Wrightwood, over the ridge of Table Mountain and into the Mojave Desert floor to the outskirts of Llano and Victorville. In 1857, Alman Clyde acquired a Swarthout ranch on Lone Pine Canyon where he ran a few cattle and grew fruit. Alman Clyde made an agreement with George Swarthout that he could live the rest of his life out on Clyde Ranch if he wanted. He was true to his word, and George Swarthout lived in the place that he obviously loved. <laughs> so a quick spin. So this is where we are. We've come down this road a little bit. As you can see, that's where we were, if I can show you. Yeah, there we are. And now, there's the Jeep. <clears throat> In this, this direction, you can see the freeway. Maybe, I zoomed in a little earlier. But there's also a road over here. And this road is called Sheep Canyon. And it says, road closed, unsafe for travel. So who knows why it's unsafe for travel, but there it is. It doesn't look unsafe. Locked to get ahead, so it really doesn't matter. This road is actually 2N56. We know that because it says it right there, 2N56. Still a beautiful area, just a gorgeous day. There's my boy standing on a sign like he's not supposed to. Oh, he's not really standing on it. Anyway, so we're gonna go back this way and keep on going.
garbage truck? Looks like it. Wait, why? Right. And ladies and gentlemen, there's a big garbage truck coming. It looks cool. I think it's going to a landfill. Man, so look at all the dirt. Swarthout lived in a line shack that he built when he developed his ranch. The line shack was approximately one quarter mile to the east and down canyon from the present day main house of Clyde Ranch. The cabin is no longer there, but if one would look hard enough, they might find its old foundation. There he lived until he passed away on December 27, 1872. green grass and, and everything. Just amazing how beautiful it is. You can see him down the road too. Just incredible. Yeah, he's holding one up. There he is. Yeah. Very good. Good job. And they're on the other side of the road as well. There's a few over there. Just incredible. Way over here too. Way down there. Around 1947, 100 years after the Swarthouts appeared on the scene, the intrusion of resorts and residential developments were gradually bringing an end to the cattle business. The decline began when the creation of the lakes at Arrowhead, Green Valley, and Big Bear Lake had taken away choice grazing land. Later, improved roadways and mode of transportation brought increasing numbers of visitors into the mountain country that had once been open range land. The inevitable finally arrived. Cattle ranching and modern lifestyles became obviously incompatible, and the final herd came down from the mountains. Yeah. Well, we found Lost Lake in the San Bernardino Forest. I think that's what it is. Yeah, the National Forest. Also, there's a train, there's all kinds of trains that run through this area, and this area happens to be closed. There is a restroom area over there. Don't know if it's open. Looks like the door's open. I'm sure the smell is lovely. And so we're parked here at the gate. Got the dog, Terrence, and Justin. So. So it looks pretty good. There is a way that you can walk through the gate. You can always hop over, but there is no way. And there's probably, I doubt there's some water over there, but maybe that's where Lost Lake actually is. Here you can see the freeway. The freeway. And at the end of this trail, I'm thinking, there's another door because that trash can, that trash can, the trash truck.
fault zone is visible here and moves about two to three inches a year. The two railroads, Union Pacific and Burlington Northern Santa Fe, have to come out twice a year and reset tracks. Well, before I, uh, well now that I said that there was no water, I just found water. Just walked a little bit further. Lost Lake is a unique natural lake created by the San Andreas Fault and is fed by deep natural springs. There are no streams, creeks, or rivers that feed the Lost Lake. The water seeps up from beneath the ground. The water is usually very cold. Fire crews have used this water supply to help fight fires and they have never noticed a drop in water levels and it never seems to freeze either. Although the lake has not been stocked with fish for many years, people still try to fish the lake. Many visit the lake to picnic along the banks and there are many opportunities to do some bird watching. But uh, pretty nice area, the whole area in general, there's lots and lots of trails around here. It's pretty nice. Uh, and it's open. Um, no, there's no, not a lot of gates, and it's just kind of open road. It's kind of like a fire road, basically. And there's lots of trains in this area. And uh, as you can probably hear in the background. And um, it's just, this is really the on the way from, or, uh, from LA to Vegas. And right around uh, the 138, which goes up into the mountains. So it's the very busy pass. Uh, where a lot of traffic goes uh, to and from through Vegas. So right in this area, that's where this is. And uh, it's pretty nice. Thanks for joining us on American Road Trip. We'll see you real soon. <laughs>